Google will become just like us after only two hours of conversation. We will summarize EdTech investments from the last few years, new subjects in Polish schools, your CV will be checked by AI first, then by a recruiter. What can we do about it? Finally, we will look at ready-to-use VR solutions for education. So, let's start the next EdTech news. Is it possible to create a virtual copy of someone's mind in just two hours? Some people say it's just science fiction, but the latest reports from Google's research lab suggest something completely different. So let's take a closer look at what's going on behind the scenes. Scientists at Google are working on technology that needs just a two-hour interview to create an AI that thinks almost exactly like you. It sounds fascinating, but it also raises a worrying question. Does our privacy stand a chance in a world where an algorithm might know us better than we know ourselves? We might think this is just another tech sensation, but imagine what could happen if this technology falls into the wrong hands. What if someone clones us and uses that against us? I can also see some potential positives. Imagine having a personal AI assistant that knows your preferences, habits, and way of thinking. For some, this might be a lifesaver in everyday task, but for others, it's an uncomfortable intrusion into privacy, and maybe a black mirror vision where it brings our loved ones back to life and let us talk to them as if they were still here is closer than we think. Another use could be better personalized content thanks to accurate profiling or going even further copying us and using our virtual twin who could for example become a teacher or a mentor or work while we are sleeping because why not? How do you see this future as something positive or a threat to us? Let me know in the comments below. According to a Tony Wan, the future of education might depend on technologies that are still in early stages today, but could transform the entire teaching system in just a few years. Think about what that means for students, parents, and companies implementing a new solution in education. In a moment, we will show you why this seemingly distant vision could become a real sooner than we expect. As you can see on the investment chart, the education sector is not slowing down. Summarizing the EdTech 2024 investment in the USA, we can see investor interest remains strong with investments close to $3 billion. So let's think about whether this influx of capital means better support for teachers or leads to the marketization of education. We should also look at the growing number investments in this sector. In my opinion, looking at the growth of the private sector in school education, as well as in companies, the awareness of developing skills is growing and will remain one of the essential parts of building competitive advantage. It's also worth noting that the projected average growth of e-learning alone is about 20% year over year, potentially reaching almost $850 billion by 2030. The next trend I want to tell you about is something I hope will spread widely, not just in Poland, because it seems it's already late. I'm talking about new subjects in Polish schools. Starting this coming school year, there will be two new subjects, civic education and health education. I do have some concerns about civic education and whether it can stay neutral, because these projects often become a playground for politicians. But when it comes to health education, I can only applaud. The first subject, civic education, aims to develop awareness about citizens' rights, democracy and how the state works. Health education, on the other hand, focuses on teaching about healthy lifestyles to prevent diseases and help us live in a good health as long as possible through prevention, diet, physical activity and something experts have warned about for years – mental health, especially in the case of young people, especially after Covid. There is still some time before September and these new subjects are already sparking debate. We will keep you updated if anything changes. It's also worth mentioning an initiative in the USA that's expanding and could have a long-term effect on health. More and more states are banning the use of phones in schools. I can only applaud and hope we introduce this band to one day all around the world. 
companies report around 40% increase in Generation Z candidates compared to two years ago. By 2027, Gen Z could make up about one third of the global workforce. To deal with this, many businesses are introducing AI recruiters, which can cut hiring time by up to 40% and reduce recruitment costs by up to 25%. These tools use natural language processing and predictive analysis to filter CVs more quickly. However, experts warn about potential bias in AI models, which can lead to unfair hiring practices. Regulators are monitoring these to ensure compliance with the law. Even so, with the growing number of applications, more and more companies are turning to automation to balance efficiency with fairness and equality, helped by ATS systems like Greenhouse or Bamboo HR, which are boldly using AI. Candidates themselves are not powerless here and can and should use AI to improve their CVs. For example, you can ask AI what it would change and why by putting both your CV and the job offer into tools like ChatGPT. Those tools can help match and tailor your CV to the position more effectively. Prompts like what would you improve so this candidate has even better chances for these positions. Also, which details are less compatible or might be viewed negatively by a future employer. Or for people who aren't sure about their ideal career path. I will show you a candidate profile. What roles do you think they are best suited for? Recruitment shaped by initial AI screening will keep growing. So I would say instead of fearing AI in recruitment, let's use it to save time and find a job that's a better fit for us and for the employer. It also creates a new opportunities, especially for edtech sector, which will not only help people gain skills, but could, when combined with the HR field, help match people to the right jobs more easily. Tailored learning could also mean tailored recruitment, and recruitment platforms might start working with educational platforms to help everyone involved. So we have talked a lot about artificial intelligence today, but now I would like to invite you on a short trip to a completely different place, a virtual lab. I want to tell you about the solution that also uses a growing technology and also relates to education. But it won't try to copy us or judge us, at least for now. It's called VR Empirius, created by the company Nova Era. This educational tool lets students do experiments in a virtual chemistry lab, explore the human body or visualize spatial geometry. Students can learn in a practical way and teachers get modern support for their lessons. What are the risks and benefits? In some subjects there could be new possibilities that weren't easy before, like watching processes inside the human body. But on the other hand, we might lose real-life experiences. I don't know about you, but for me, the excitement of real experiments in a school chemistry lab can't be replaced, and those might get replaced by virtual ones. Of course, it all depends on the schools and teachers, but VR can also be used outside of the schools. And here, I would like to mention a part company that's building a solution for training firefighters, Fire and Flames. They don't just use Google, they also use special platforms to make the experience more immersive. Predefined training scenarios allow you to safely practice dangerous situations. The solution makes it possible for firefighting teams to train together in virtual reality, cooperating with each other. And with that, we have covered everything we have prepared for you today. See you in the next edition and remember, stay tech educated!